which I just saw that America Makes and MakerBot are going to work to try and get one of the 3D printer in, in every school, yeah. uh, in middle high school, you know, sort of getting it down to that level and, and start the energy and excitement there. It's a challenge because oftentimes it's research that's driving this, but to really, to really take advantage of this, you do, you do need to have that access. And so at the same time, how do you get the middle school, the high school students that can come in and do tours that maybe do in a CAD class and in high school now can see what what the you know a, a metal 3D printer is going to look like when they get to college or something like that. It's it gets them excited. It gets them uh, uh, they're excited to be engineers. When, well, how many exactly. times have we said that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, 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 it does create that excitement. You get you get individuals that uh, get excited and interested about math, about design, about subjects that they n normally wouldn't. And a few you know we've had some experience where uh, trying to get. Uh, girls interested in engineering or are confident in math, and now they can 3D print it very easily, quickly. And now they don't mind doing the upfront work, the design work, because they know at the end they're going to be able to have what they design, what they spend a lot of time in their hand. And they're going to know whether it's going to work or not. And so that creates a lot of excitement and a lot of the interest. I could envision years down the road yeah. that we will be making things we need <laughs> right out of our home. So. But think about the price point now. Twelve hundred, fifteen hundred dollars is right. about the same what we were buying laser printers right. way back when. And then yeah. if you're following any of the Kickstarter campaigns that are yeah. driving these things to two, three, five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's oh, going I think down it's down the us. road. Yeah. Uh, eventually, yeah. that'll be in many people's homes that they'll be making parts that they don't have to go buy them at the store. Absolutely. Yeah, but exactly the same concept can be done by the industry. They don't need to have a spare part anymore because they have in a disk all the files related to the spare part and not only they print it. So imagine mm -hmm. that inventory changing the whole and chain management. Everything is going to change yeah, because really you don't need to have a spare part. And the manufacturing side certainly can yeah. support a bridge to tooling. So the tooling has been delayed. Yeah, you sure. may have outsourced it offshore. It comes back. It's not working. Yet your client's screaming for parts. It gives you a good alternative to produce those low volume requirements just to satisfy a client mm -hmm. in the meantime. Re remote, so. com remote community yeah. or the ship and vessels around the world will have a 3D printing on board to print their spare parts. I think it's very interesting, its implications uh, on a global scale uh, in terms of all you need to do is get the file, the CAD file, send it to the printer and you can print the exact same thing that you have in one location as the other location. Now we have a collaborator around the world sending the digital file to us and we print it because they don't have a capability of that. But the students can work collaboratively as a global <laughs> project put together a piece for the remote community to the villages. All this can be done through the new education reform which this technology or tool supports. And it's a great way for design teams across the world to work together. Well, there's organizations that design around the clock. You know, the time zones don't interfere. So yeah. as soon as they're done, the team takes over where the previous team left off. So they have distributed computing. They have distributed manufacturing and uh, being able to print the file, think about it. Now that it was designed, let's say, in, in New Delhi, and, and then the designer in the United States picks it up the next day or shortly after, but he prints it at his facility, uses that model to help steer and guide the design, makes some updates, and hands it over. Then the next day, someone in New Delhi prints that part. Uh, so I, it's a continuum yeah, in I, the development. I had cycle. a story. I, I, I was in China two days ago visiting a university. They had a capstone project, and the students was designing a complex part, but they couldn't have a t they didn't have a time for the manufacturing. I asked them to send a digital file. While I was in a plane, I sent a digital file to my labs. They print it and they ship it to Chile 48 hours. Mm -hmm. They were so happy. They were so excited to have something like that. And in future, I think that we can have more and more of this project, international mm -hmm. projects. Very interesting topics. Thank you very much uh, for your time. Mm -hmm.